Hello. Guys, guess what? It's hydroboration oxidation mechanism time. Are you ready? All right, so for the hydroboration mechanism, I like to think of it like a spacecraft or alien spaceship landing down, because that's basically how the reaction occurs. Okay, so make sure you watch that intro video first. Just click here to be forwarded to the video, or you can click on the link down below in the description box. Okay, so first I want you guys to try out this product, product prediction, okay? Um, I want you to use the shortcut that I taught you in my last video. This way I know if you guys are actually watching or not. But yeah, try this out, see if you can get the products, and then we'll go into the mechanism, okay? Take a sec. Um, all right, so did you guys get these, um, well, this product over here? Uh, don't forget, spaceship landing, right? Um, so your OH and your hydrogen should be both facing the same side, first of all. It could be up or down, doesn't really matter. Your OH should be on the carbon that is less substituted, meaning it's bound to more hydrogens and less carbon chains. Uh, hydrogen on the side that has more carbons bound to it, which is this side. Um, yeah, and I guess another way of thinking about it is OH on the carbon with more hydrogens, hydrogen on the side with less hydrogens, okay? Um, if you think this one's kind of like confusing, scary, don't worry about it. Uh, it's a nice little intermediate product that I like to keep in mind when I do this mechanism because it's sort of like the halfway point. So when you reach it, that's how you know, okay, I'm doing things right, I'm almost done. So um, yeah, hopefully that helps a little bit. If you're confused about it, don't worry, I'll explain why in a little bit, okay? So um, the hydroboration oxidation mechanism, mechanism can basically be split up into two parts. The hydroboration part with BH3, THF, and the oxidation part with H2O2, also known as peroxide, NaOH, um, which is a base, and water, H2O. Um, the first step, or first half of the mechanism, right, the hydroboration part, all you're basically doing is attaching boron onto three alkenes. That's why you kind of see your alkene over here. One over here, one over here, and one over here, okay? It loses all three hydrogens to the three alkenes, and that's mainly it for that first step. This, the oxidation step, what you're basically doing is knocking off your boron and getting a hydroxy group onto your um, carbon, okay? So let's do the mechanism out. Um, you have your BH3. Hopefully you remember from my last video that boron's kind of a wimp, right? So because boron's kind of a wimp, you have partial negative charges on hydrogen. And what I meant by boron's a wimp is that he can't hold on to his electrons. He's not very electronegative, so he's actually partially positive. And that's why this um, reaction is so different from the other ones you've done, like hydrohalogenation, acid catalyzed hydration, et cetera, et cetera. So what happens is that the double bond's going to attack the boron because the double bond is electron rich. It's going to seek out something that's positive, and boron's partially positive. And then boron likes only three bonds, right? He's getting a fourth bond from the alkene, so he's going to give up one of his bonds, his bonds with hydrogen. And what's going to happen is that the, bond, the, the two electrons in the bond with hydrogen is going to attack the carbon that is more substituted, meaning it's bound to more carbons, which is this one right here, versus this one that's bound to no other carbons on the left. Uh, the reason behind this is because in the attack, right, the two electrons in the bond basically slide over here and attack the, bor uh, the boron. So as a result, when the two electrons slide over, this carbon here is deprived of electrons and it becomes more and more positive. So it's going to track the attack from over here. All right. So now you should get to this little intermediate over here. Um, the, du the double bond is gone now because the electrons went to form the bond with uh, boron. The hydrogen boron bond broke. It's bound to the carbon over here now. So now the next step, right, is in order to, in order to get to this middle product that we need to aim for, this uh, step here basically happens twice more. And I'm just going to do it out just in case uh, you guys just want to see it. I've seen, I checked some of the online mechanisms, and they just showed this. So in case any of you got stuck here, um, I'll walk you through it right now. So this basically happens two more times. So I'm gonna, I need another alkene. So I'm going to draw one over here. The double bond's going to attack the boron, just like before. 
the uh, this bond this time is going to break and attack the more substituted car uh, carbon. That's that one. So now we're going to get the hydrogen should be replaced by another former former alkene that lost its double bond. The hydrogen from before should be on the more substituted carbon, like it is over here, just like before. And now we're just going to do this one more time so we get to this intermediate product, OK? Oh yeah, in case any of, you, any of you were wondering, where did this alkene come from? You're doing a reaction in a, uh, I guess, in a beaker, so there's plenty of alkene molecules. It's not just one molecule in your beaker, OK? Um, yeah, so I'm just going to draw another alkene over here, all right? So how's the reaction going to work? Where is my arrow going to start? Hopefully you said from the alkene to the, um, the um, wimpy boron who is partially positive, remember, because he can't hold on to his electrons. So then boron only wants three bonds. He's getting a fourth bond. So then this bond with hydrogen breaks, and it attacks this carbon over here. All right? So what's your next intermediate, then? It should be um, this molecule over here. I know it looks kind of crazy, but um, this molecule over here is basically that molecule over there. Um, I didn't fit everything perfectly, so it looked like that. If any of you are confused why I wrote CH3 here and not for the rest, uh, it all means the same thing. Um, I, I, just, I just kept this one here because originally we had a CH3. Um, so this is basically a CH3. This is basically a CH3 like we have in our middle product over there. Um, I didn't show the other hydrogens here just to save space so it won't look, be as cluttered. So yeah, this is, the basic, this is basically the hydroboration part of the mechanism, OK? If you have any questions, feel free to just post a comment down below, and I'll get to it when I have a chance. All right, so the mechanism for hydroboration is done. We've gotten to this product over here. Next is the oxidation step, all right? So take a second and see if you can try and figure out what happens in the oxidation step, and then come back in like a sec, OK?